Okay guys, so last time we did a video about the Ryko Z9 and also compared it to the super cheap SCO9 we came to the conclusion from what we'd found that this one wasn't a good filter because of its internal components and the Ryko had holes in its filter media so neither of them were really a good option and if you're a Z9 user, I didn't want to leave you guys without a option of something that would actually be good but still cheap. I know that Ryko do their Z9 ST, which is a synthetic version, and I know the media in those is good. Um, I've done a video on Z432 ST, uh, which shows that that's quite a nice filter. The K and N, I'm not quite sure. We haven't looked at the Z9 version, but from this K and N filter that we have looked at on here, that wasn't very good. So today we're going to try our old and trusty Fleet Guard. I've got a LF3313 here, which is the standard base model version of the Z9. As I said before, you can get this basic normal one and also the synthetic one. Fleet Guard offer a few different versions here. This is the cheapest one. And out of these three, this is actually the cheapest one. So this is only like $7 or something like that. So I'll get into this one and compare them to the other filters later on. It comes in the Standard Fleet Guard plastic bag. Just keeps it all sealed up. You know that. It's really the standard Fleet Guard lube filter. OEM approved. Tightening instructions. Date code on the back made in Mexico. Go over the top. Looks similar to all the others. A little bit strange for a filter for having a little tiny inlet holes, but that's how the Z9s are. Now we're going the gasket sits a nice distance off the top of the filter. Yes, the Ryko is the baseline here, as opposed to the Ryko, where when it's in the housing, it only just sits above it. So, and in terms of size, you know, they're pretty well the same thing in doing. Fleet Guard may be a tad smaller. We'll overlook to see how much filter and media is actually in them. we we'll get this bad boy cut open and see what we got, if it's a good option or not. Alright, so we got the media, the edge cut off. As usual, that's got a very good amount of spring in it. So the gasket on here, as I said, sits a nice height above. Sits in there nicely. Wouldn't be many issues with that coming out. And also we got the base plate. One, two, three, four threads. Good decent amount there. Obviously our little inlet holes that look undersized for the size of the filter, but if you compare that to the Ryko. So the fleet guard's got a little bit more flow. The holes are a little bit bigger. And base blade is good, decent thickness. It is what it should be for the type of car filter it is. Got the old anti-drain back valve. Appears to be rubber, but it's very nice and flexible. got quite a bit more thickness to it than the Ryko 
even now that's silicon. And in terms of fit on the filter head, a little bit loose on there, but that would be because canister is a different design to the Ryko and that sits nicely on there and then presses that way against the filter head instead of relying on a radial seal this is actually a Parker brand seal you can see that so that's actually yeah, the good quality they make the best hydraulic seals you can get they make good rubber so a lot of people silicon seems to be a big deal personally uh, a lot of the best filter manufacturers in the world such as Fleet Guard and Donaldson they hardly ever use silicon any drain back valve and I think they build their filters to be the best but affordable at the same time and a lot of the time I think that they realise that silicon is something that's expensive and doesn't really make that much of a difference to a filter's performance. So I don't quote me on that, but I reckon that was why that would be why they don't use silicon. So a good valve there. Now our element. Close look at that in a minute. What have we got down in here? Huge big coil string. Compare that to the Ryko. I look a bit similar on camera, but we'll have a look at the thickness. It's coming in at like 2.3 the gauge on the fleet guard is like 2.9 it's quite a bit thicker and in terms of compression I'm putting about the same pressure on that and the fleet guard's not moving and compare that to the super cheap now we're on internal components that's this crap right here. Nothing in it. Fleet guard also comes with the little spring holder. Helps keep it retained in the center of the filter. And I suppose helps take care of the bottom of the filter a bit. Terms of the can with the edge. Decent six mil, you know, that's nothing special there. But once again, this is a even though it's a fairly large filter, it's not off a heavy duty diesel engine, it's off a like, smaller car engines. Happy with all the components there. You now, our canister, very solid steel end cap. A little bit of something on there. Appears to be probably a little bit of excess glue right on the bottom of the filter. But there's not a bits of it anywhere. That there's not glue, that's a weld spot weld mark. There's no bits of glue falling off or nothing, so and then we got our decent bypass valve in there so that's a nice canister we'll get the filter media cut out and take a look at it right so i got the media cut out comes to a total length of about 2.4 meters so that is a tad less than a z9 about just a bit over 15 centimeters less 
in terms of the I had the same, I cut a little bit, a little bit further from the edge on the fleet guard, it's about the same width. So as I said at the start of the video, the actual canister itself on the fleet guard is a fray smaller. And it's obviously being reflected in the amount of media. But for the size of the filter it is, it's a marginal difference. Uh, we'll put some of this under the microscope and have a look. Right guys, so that's the media and it is that's just a standard fleet guard cellulose media. Certainly no holes in it like the Ryko. Um, you know, just standard, standard good quality media. There's nothing wrong with that. I say it'll do, do a better job than the super cheap as well, which doesn't have holes in it, but it's got quite coarse, big threads. So this is going to filter to a finer standard. In terms of our cam, once again, very solid. In the middle, heavyweight can, uh, wire pass valve. We've got our steel crimp in the media, and a very decent amount of glue. That was our other issue with the Ryko. So it has so little glue that the media was pulling away from the edges. In terms of these other two filters, stick them like this. Like that. Okay. Set one. Super cheap. So if you look at all these side by side for a minute, in terms of cans, we'd have to say the right coast got the best can. It is the the uh, thickest. I would say it does have the filter removal aids on the bottom. The fleet guard doesn't, a lot of this stuff doesn't. But if you've got the right tools, it's never an issue. And base plate. Out of all three. The fleet guard seal sits the furthest above the edge. And I'd also have to say the super cheap on the end here has got the best flow in the fleet guard and the Ryko. The threads on the super cheap are a bit lacking compared to the others, they don't have as many. Spring, already visited. No question that the fleet guard's the strongest. Drain back valve, very poor quality silicon there on the super cheap. You know, average silicon there and then a good quality rubber on the fleet car. They all seal pretty well. Fleet guard also comes with the spring protector. Canister on the super cheap is the thinnest that I've ever seen. You can cut your finger on that if you're running along it. Poor quality holes, extremely lightweight, tiny little valve. Poor quality, minimal amount of glue in there. It's a bit hard to see sometimes, but minimal. Ryko, it's a nice solid canister with a big bypass valve. 
It's a nice center tube, the holes are nice. Main problem here being a lack of glue causing this sort of separation, which if that pulled away while I was in your engine, the oil would just be going straight past that and not getting filtered. Just certainly not what you want, that's not what the filter's for. Fleet guard, solid, about the same weight as the Ryko. Zing caps, nice and big bypass valve. Plenty of glue. Heaps of it there. And then in the media, which is what the filter actually is, the I have to grab the microscope shots for these and put them up here as well. Did my light. The super cheap is very coarse, which means it's not going to filter very finely um, and let a lot of big particles go through your engine. Ryko looked dense and nice, but it had holes in it, which is just going to let anything through and then just tear the holes bigger and just do essentially nothing. In the fleet guard, you know, fairly fine, no holes, it's just going to do a good job. There's a little bit less of it in there, but I would rather have, you know, 15 centimetres less filter media that actually works than have more stuff that's got holes in it or it's not going to filter properly. So, you don't have to take my word for it or anything. If you use your Z9 and you're happy with that, then you can keep doing that. But from what I've seen in those reviews, if I was going to pick a, this is an economy grade filter to replace the Z9, I'd be definitely using the Fleet Guard. They, it just doesn't seem to have any issues. They're just trusty. As I've said before, this is if you want to spend bottom dollar on a filter. If you actually want to protect your engine better, then you are better off getting a synthetic version, which are readily available. The Z9 STs are on the shelf right next to these, and they're a good option. They don't have problems with the media, as far as I'm aware from what I've seen. Fleet Guard also makes synthetic version with their Stratopore media which is absolute top of the line stuff. Um, so there's also better options. You'd be looking at about spending double the money, but they are good. This is for if you are looking for a bottom dollar filter, looking at these three readily available big brands. Obviously in Australia. So there we have it.